Godzilla is back and he's still mean. Nerd soul. Late ill kid at one youngster hone it down, bringing that street geek and nerd soul. What is up, my people, today? Oh, yeah, we're coming with another wonderful episode of thumbnails. That's right, we got geek, we got hip hop, and on thumbnails, it's all about anime, animation, all that stuff that we draw and put on the screen. So, we're talking about a, a movie that surprised me, and I, I was just so happy to see it when Netflix dropped it. Then I found out there were going to be three films. I reviewed the first film. This one's going to be a little bit different the way I run it down because these are the three things that I like about Godzilla 2 City on the Edge of Battle. And there is a lot to love about this, but so much is related. Now, I think I'm going to wind it and weave it together, uh, especially since this is thumbnails and movie review, putting it together a bit. Now, this is a spoiler, so you ain't seen it yet. Go ahead and check it out, but I'm making a spoiler because it's Netflix, man. You probably already watched it. You're going to watch it in two seconds. It's not like you got to get up and go to a movie theater. So let's get it started with number three. I love the different races like the the Met Fees, the Billa Saludo, the, the humanoids or the humans. Uh, also these extra uh, kind of like human beings that they say might be, you know, descendants or maybe another split off from mo monsters or something like that. I love seeing these different human humanoid types coming together and figuring out how to move ahead, how to work together, how to survive and or figure out if we can live on this planet. And the reason I'm saying that is because so many times you see in the future where everything is just broken down. And in this future, you know, people are in a dire situation, but it's not where they're like fighting for water or they're like, you know, in some wasteland, you know, they're back on earth and earth is kind of okay, but it's just taken over by monsters. But the humans haven't gotten to a point where they're fighting and scratching and killing each other. Hopefully not. So, you know, you got, you know, so many people in space, depending on people, you know, down on Earth, and them being able to work together is just something that I thought was kind of cool. Now, I mean, of course, there's, there's friction, you know, because they are, they do come from very different standpoints where some are like very religious or some are very like logical and uh, militaristic and stuff like that. But I do like how they fit them together to make it work. I think it's a great look for the movie, for the, the outward appearance of just where society could be, where it could go, um, if we find life on other planets, stuff like that. Um, so I, I think it's a very good look on this show. Um, so I love the, the different races, the different, um, you know, the points of view and the different perspectives from other planets that come together here on planet Earth. So I think that's dope. I think it's definitely worth a watch to see how they work out their interpersonal relationships and inter-societal relationships. But let me move on to number two, which is something they refer to as the monster factor. And I'll tie this in a little bit with nanometal as well. But the monster factor is just based on that since the earth has been kind of like turned over to monsters that everything has started to evolve to fit the form and to conform two monsters and of course the king monster being of course godzilla so seeing where that goes how it you know how it has progressed from godzilla and you know from the plant life to the soil to the mountains to the you know dogs and cats the birds whatever all of that stuff little like uh little dragons and stuff like how it has kind of like broken off from him as a tree and continued to move also nano metal which has come from, of course, Mecha Godzilla, where it, it's it's weirdly counteracting or working against the, I guess you could say, furtherance of the Godzilla agenda. Maybe I'm crazy on that one, but I do like the fact that we have a planet that is evolved. It has changed to the point where maybe it's not suitable for humans. Like they got to keep their helmets on. They have to have a certain atmosphere. It doesn't work for them no more. But then you have these humanoids that are completely fine in it. So can, you know, these Villa Saludo, can the Metfees, can humans, can they come back to this planet and strive? Like say, even if Godzilla wasn't there, due to the monster factor, could they survive? Could they thrive here? And I like those questions being asked 
in this show and these, you know, kind of like situations of sci-fi being pushed forward. I think there's something about sci-fi that I think should be real introspective. And I think that this makes a lot of those people look inward as to the motives for what they're doing. Are they coming back to Earth just because it's Earth? Because I mean, at first it was like they had nowhere to go, but now are there other possibilities? I mean, could we go somewhere, somewhere else? Or do we just want Earth because Earth was ours? You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm gonna get to number one in just a moment, but of course, first, through all the monster factor, through all the Godzilla fire breathing, the, all that good stuff, Cure Brand is gonna help us pay them bills. Oh, yeah, check the link below, hat shirts, hoodies, all that jazz, and once you find something you like, of course, cop it. Now, we talked about the, the kind of like interplanetary species or races relationships. We talked about the monster factor. Well, let's go on and talk the monster. The number one thing in this, even though I love how they revealed it, some people might not like it, but it's Godzilla. Yo, the, the way they make you wait to see Godzilla this time. Because in the first movie, you kind of get to see, well, who we think is Godzilla. We get to see him kind of early on. You know, they get to the planet and we start to get battles pretty soon. And this one, we wait, but what we wait for is a very intense battle with these vultures that they create from the nano metal, which is super slick, super sweet. It, it's a mech, man. You get a, a giant robot and a monster and I'm down. But of course, there are no, you know, they're, size comparison, they're no match for Godzilla, but it still just looks cool how they whip around. But Godzilla is just so powerful, so menacing, and so unstoppable. And I like that they continue to show that because they put together an amazing plan that should have worked. But I like the fact that Godzilla has lived so long and evolved so far that he's almost impenetrable, man. Like, they did get the harpoons to sort of work but do bounce back from it so it's like is he immortal is he an unkillable you know organism that just will not be stopped or slowed down in any way shape or form and i like how he just destroyed with his tail with the fire breathing it it gave me the monster action that i needed especially mixed between you know the um the cannons the rail guns the mechs all of that stuff and dude just kept on coming. And I love that because I'm gonna jump and you know, in the end of the second, I'm gonna give y'all a little piece from the post credits, but I'm just so hyped to see Godzilla in this way because I mean, normally we've seen him live action and stuff like that. And live action was pretty cool in 2014, 16, something like that. But in the anime form, there's so much more that can be done. Um, so I really dug Godzilla's style in this. Yo, he wrecked shop like he's supposed to. They didn't like punk him down or something like that. Dude definitely came through and he was menacing. Now, if I was gonna add one thing and say that there was maybe a, a honorable mention, I would go to Haruo and Yuko's relationship. And more on uh, Yuko because she's in so much danger at the end of the film. Um, and just how much she believes in us being able to come back and take this planet and really stepping up where no one else would. You know, it's like she was the only pilot and like they gave up opportunities and nobody, everybody was out like, nah, nah, we good. So I really loved how she stepped up and was like, yo, this is dangerous job, but you know, this is what we sign up for. We're the, I don't know, Galactic Marines or something. I don't know what, I, I can't remember what they named them, but they dangerous. And then Harwell with just fighting with whether he's making the right choices. Is he a good leader? What position should I take? What path should I follow? Those things, you know, they hit all of us. And I think they spent enough time in this movie on that to make it real. Uh, at least to me, I felt like this guy was really dealing with some serious stuff that he wanted to get over. So 
all in all, man, I really enjoyed this. I had a ball that we had some cool new monsters that we didn't get before. We got the nano metal, which really came out of nowhere. We got more mentions of Mecha Godzilla. Maybe it'll be able to come back. Maybe it won't. We got Godzilla smashing all over the place. And we got like a little bit of a love thing, like a little bit of a love story with, of course, Harwell and Yuko. So, yo, man, I dug it. I had a ball. If I was to rate it, you know what? I ain't gonna rate this one. I'm gonna leave this one to you guys. Let me know, holler at me, I'm gonna holler at you. Down in them comments, let me know. It's three stars, four stars, five stars, two, one? You know what I'm saying? Let me know what you think about Godzilla City on the Edge of Battle. I'm psyched, man. I, I wanna see how they cap off this story. So, before I bounce, I'm gonna tell you guys to hit up thatnerdsoul.com. That's right, check me out right there. All my videos from the oldest, newest, latest, greatest, and all that, and hit up shop thatnerdsoul.com and pick yourself up a t-shirt player. Don't forget to get one for them play ads. Then come back here, like, comment, subscribe, and share that nerd soul. That's right, there's no better way that I can show people that you like what you are watching. So, LA, what up? VA, what up? RVA, you got my heart, and please be good to yourselves. Please be good to each other, and remember, the worst, absolute worst place to hide is out in the open. Peace.